picked the wrong weight to quit sniffing glue. My God, what's Bond doing? I think he's attempting re-entry, sir. Well, hello. Welcome back. It is uh, coming up on the end of 2023. We've only got a couple of weeks left. So I figure what better way to close out the year than with a little light bondage. Um, yes, I'm finally building something from the James Bond universe. And of course, knowing me, it wasn't going to be any old car. No, it was going to be the uh, Moonraker one from the movie of the same name. Now, Moonraker is a very divisive movie amongst Bond fans. It is either um, the best of Bond or it is the worst of Bond. Um, personally, when I watch James Bond, I want to see megalomaniacs trying to take over the world and I want to see a wisecracking, super suave secret agent that suddenly everybody knows, seemingly everybody knows, uh, to stop him. I do, I like, uh, you know, sue me. I like the lighter James Bonds. I like the, I like the Roger Moore James Bonds. I don't like the super serious ones. I mean, if I want to see that, I'll go watch the Born Identity or something. Um, so my, my heart goes out to Moonraker. Now, um, it just, it just goes to show you that even the James Bond universe is not impervious to the uh, siren song that is Star Wars. Because this came out right in, right in smack dab in the middle of all that. And he's like, give us some of that sweet Star Wars money. We're going to do our own version of James Bond in outer space using the space shuttle Moonraker. Um, and it has everything. It's got... It's got a space station. It's got multiple shuttle launches. It's got Jaws. It's got uh, uh, Holly Goodhead. It's got uh, it's got a pigeon doing a double take for God's sake. It's got the Close Encounters music. It's got uh, everything. But this, to me, it's either like I said, it's either peak James Bond or it is the the bottom, scraping bottom of the barrel James Bond, depending on what your tastes are. For me, this is peak James Bond. So uh, we're going to be building, like I said, we're going to be building the Moonraker. Now, this is not, I would say, not a serious model. This is not, you're not going to find your down-to-the-rivet accurate space shuttle and, and uh, launcher in this kit. But you're gonna at least if you're, you're if you're coming with me, you're gonna have some fun with it. So let's get down to the table and meet the parts. And here are said parts. Now, like I said, this is not gonna be what I would call a, you know extremely accurate kit. This is not uh, uh, a rivet counters um, delight. This is a very very basic kit. And when you have the, all of this sub stack into uh, two parts front and back this is going to be a fairly simple kit to build which is you know as it should be on the end of the year i'm closing up shop for the year and um i want to do something something light something uh, fairly easy and most importantly something that's not going to take up a whole bunch of room when it's done so uh let's get to it i think there's not really anything i can do now rather than Oh, excuse me. Rather than start um, pulling off some parts and doing the um, left and right builds. And then we'll see if we can get some primer on some of these parts. Hello, everybody. It's Tuesday. Welcome back to this rather simple build of the Space Shuttle Moonraker from the movie of the same name. Now, I've decided a couple of things of import. One is that uh, this isn't going to be open. Uh, the shuttle bay is not going to be open. It's going to be a static display piece. So that means I don't have to do anything about worrying about what's going into this piece here. I'm just going to use it to fill the space in the cock in the uh, bay that it's supposed to take up. And that way I can go ahead and put the uh, two halves of the shuttle together and uh, I'm going to find a way to pinch these uh, pinch the doors in place and then they'll get uh, glued shut. And uh, we'll proceed from there. But we got a lot of seams that deal with a lot of uh, 
feeling that, well, see, that's going to go against the stack, so I don't even know if I need to worry about filling in that. I've got the stack here. It's been sprayed with a gray primer to get it started. And uh, we're going to proceed from there. Now, as I said before the battery died, uh, this is not a great kit. If you work at it, you will get something that is, you know, basically shuttle shaped. Uh, but it will not be mistaken by anybody for a completely accurate kit. Um, there's just so many awkward seams and all of that. Uh, I am going to go ahead and put a primer coat on this. I want to wait until the back is painted before I put the engine bells on. Uh, but that's all it's going to take to finish this guy up. The uh, stack has, is ready to go. It's been primed and sanded. I need to prime that once again to cover up the uh, seams that I have sanded. And then that will be ready for its final coats. And uh, as I said, the most complicated thing about this is going to be putting all the decals down. I guess we need to decide which Moonraker we're going to do, whether it's Moonraker 1 through Moonraker 6. They're all... I can't imagine buying five more of these kits so that I, just so that I could have the whole fleet. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I'll pick one of these that I like and go ahead and just com complete that version. I'll probably find something that uses the majority of the decals. I kind of like these the checkered ones here but apparently those only show up on the marine versions and I don't want to do that I want to do the orange striped uh, Moonraker version so uh, we can pretty much skip the skip those so uh, yeah let me go put a primer coat on this and see how it see if it looks any better that way well both halves now have their uh, first coats of white primer on it I've had the gray primer on it and let that dry and sand it a little bit and uh, took care of some seams and then put, started putting the white primer on it and the gray is giving me a nice uh, a dark, well it's giving me a nice contrast, a pre-shading if you will because the white doesn't quite go into all of the cracks so uh, you get some natural shadowing there and then of course we've got this thing and um, we're just going to let these dry and I think Tomorrow we can put the uh, final top coats on it, which will leave the whole rest of the week for decaling and things like that. Uh, again, like I said, not a complicated build, not a not a uh, involved build, but you know something that'll take a few days to finish. Hello, so everybody! It is Wednesday. Um, we're gonna hope for a better day than yesterday, for reasons. <coughs> excuse me, for reasons I don't want to go into. Yesterday was not a great day. Uh, there was a lot of sitting around waiting for things, and I didn't. I don't like that. It's against my nature. So today, hopefully, we're going to have a better one, and it's going to be starting off by putting some white paint on basically everything you see here. Now I've got the white and I've got the gray primers on here, but it's time to put a bit of a top coat on here. Now, uh, as as simple as this paint scheme is, it's still deserves to be treated with love and respect and all of that good things so uh, what I'm going to do <coughs> excuse me what I'm going to do is uh, well I've spent the I spent the first part of the morning doing that most odious of tasks which is to clean the airbrush I never you know it's a failing I don't you know I'm, I'm too old to change my ways now it's a failing I never clean my brush out at the end of the day like you're supposed to for some reason, I'm always surprised when I come back the next day and it's all gummed up. Well, you know, if you take 20 minutes at the end of the day and clean your brush out, that wouldn't happen. But you know me. Uh, tension span of a goldfish. So um, I've spent the first part of the morning cleaning out the brush, getting it ready to go. And basically all I'm going to be doing is putting a basic white coat on everything it's going to be doctor day we're putting a white coat on everything so i'm just stirring up the paint real good i need to add some uh add some thinner to it i uh, also did that thing where i took a bunch of half jars and quarter jars and combined them into one big jar 
and uh, that neatens up the uh, paint rack because you don't have so many jars of paint hanging around but it also uh, if I would just learn to finish one before I open the next again that would also be nice but yes but enough about my failings today let's get on to the uh, the shuttle at hand now because the black the underside of the shuttle is black everybody knows that I'm not going to concern myself too much with the uh, painting of the bottom of this it's going to be black it's going to be it's going to have a gray accent around the outside edge uh, again uh, bearing very little resemblance to shuttles in real life but that's how the uh, that's how the box calls out the colors um, let me see uh, actually no it's got black all the way out to the edge although the art on the cover shows that to be a dark gray and not a black we're going to make it all black that's one thing we can fix so uh, areas that are going to be black I'm not going to concern myself with painting white first so uh, I've diluted the white get it in the brush and uh, lowered the pressure on it because I realized I've been running high lately and I am going to try to agitate this uh, paint and get it uh, nice and stirred get it all uh, homogenized into one jar here so it needs a good shaky shaky and uh, then we'll start down to painting this and then we'll let it dry and then we'll come back in and paint the accents on it ready I think I'm ready to paint the black on the shuttle now I've got everything taped off that I want to keep white I will have to paint that back part separately or, or on a second pass because I just need to uh, have some way to hold on to this thing while I'm painting and I think that's going to be the most obvious way to do it um, do the whole bottom and the sides and then those uh, bits of the trailing ends of the wings and we'll do that in a nice traditional flat black okay so I got the black on we're gonna let that dry because uh, it's black paint and it's uh, very potent <coughs> excuse me it's very potent stuff next to uh, white paint and you don't want to uh, get those two contaminated with each other so we're just gonna let that sit trouble is I'm trying to find a way to uh, balance this on something that it will there you go perfectly just like that there it's Thursday morning it's the gateway of the weekend it's almost Christmas heavens I hope you guys are having a wonderful Christmas season now you will have see, it will have come and gone by the time you see this video but I hope it was it was a good one I hope you made some nice memories and uh, today we are going to start uh, the, the long road to decaling. Now I've got the tower off in the other room. It's been sprayed with a satin coat to get it ready for decaling. I put some of the Optimus Prime Blue on this base because if anything the base or the this kit is screaming for a little bit of color. It's black and white with orange stripes on it for heaven's sakes. It needs a little bit of color. So I made the base blue. And I put also a, a nice uh, satin coat on the shuttle itself so that I can get ready for decals. Now at this stage, I'm used to painting a lot more of it, but a lot of like, the windows and such are uh, taken care of by the decals, so I don't have to. What I'm going to do is de put all the decals down and then see what detail might still be missing and then uh, paint them in that way because I'll still have to put a flat coat over everything once it's done. Uh, that's why I'm waiting to attach the uh, engine bells because I don't want a flat coat over top of them. Uh, they can be added after everything else is done. But we're pretty much ready for uh, the... Uh, I'm just looking to see what kind of touching up might need to be done. I'm having a devil of a time keeping these blacks and whites separate from each other. Every time I hit a, hit anything, um, even though I think I'm protecting it, I'm getting all of this overspray. That means I have to go back in and redo it because the contrast here is important. Now we've got decals that cover most of the uh, wing itself, uh, particularly if you're doing the Moonraker version. That's where the this is where the orange decal goes. But I want to make sure it's clean underneath there. And I keep running into the this demarcation line between the flap and the black. It, whether or not I can hand paint that in or not, I don't know. But uh, it keeps wanting to creep in. I just need to make sure my tape is 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 uh, 
more exact on those lines and we can get them painted one last time. Okay, so I've just done a little bit more touching up of paint on the stack here on the uh, orange stripes. Now, there comes a time, and this, this may be a controversial position, but I'm going to take it. There comes a time when you're working on a model and it becomes a question of how much more effort am I going to put into this thing? If it's a, you know, if it's a, if the model is great to begin with, yeah, I'll spend months on it. But for something like this, for this kit, this kit, which is not a great kit, um, there's only so much time on energy I'm going to put into it. And uh, that's, that's the point we're getting to now. I'm going to put the decals on it, then I'm going to do last, a last uh, gasp of uh, touch-up on it and uh, then a flat coat to finish it but really at a certain point it's like uh, am i going to sweat all these tiny tiny details on something that is not that great of a kit to start with you want to make the best kit out of it that you can and i'm certainly not going to you know skimp on it but at, by a certain point it's like i've gone over this thing two or three times and that's frankly all the energy i'm willing to devote to it Let's get some uh, decals on this and uh, like, uh, then we'll f do the finishing touches. Like there's a, uh, a silver that goes on the very tip here that I don't want to paint until I have put the flat coat on because putting flat coats over silver, it, it, it ruins it. Um, and there may be a, a few details I may want to pick out with the silver and certainly there's a nose the front nose on the shuttle has the same little bit that needs to be painted. But I think I'm, I'm done waltzing around the uh, stacks here. And I am ready to uh, start putting some decals down. It's time to start putting the decals down. Now, uh, uh, you know me, I like putting the big showy ones down first. Because if it's going to screw up, it's going to screw up here. And it's uh, no sense going too much further down this road if these decals don't work. So... Big wing decals go down first. I'll let those dry and then the ones that come and wrap around I will do later once these are in position. And then I will move to the front and do the, the windows and the ones that go around there. So uh, let's dunk these in, let them sit, and uh, we're off. I have to say, I put down many a decal in my day and the decals are, are vital to this kit. Those went down beautifully. Those are the, the color is wonderful on them. They fit just fine. Um, that's really going to make or break this kit. But it's I'm really enjoying that, and I've been hard, critical on round two slash AMT's decals in the past. But these are uh, I will say so far without fear of jinxing anything. These are marvelous. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave those ones alone. Let those set up, and I'm going to put the uh, the windows down and see um, if the luck holds. Continuing to put the smaller decals along the uh, nose section and I'm noticing something interesting. It looks very much like the decals are meant to combat the inaccurate molded in detail on the shuttle itself like around the windows and where the thrusters are the thrusters are not exactly molded incorrectly but the decal is meant to cover that kind of gloss over that cover them up with a more accurate detail it's just going to be odd when it soaks down into and doesn't match the indents around it that's an interesting way of dealing with it i'll give you that but it's uh kind of uh Kind of confusing in its own right. If you'll see what's happening with those thrusters on the nose there. They don't quite line up with the uh, molded in detail underneath. And I guess the, uh, well the windows didn't match quite either. But you're supposed to uh, give deference to the windows and not the indents where the windows are supposed to be. So uh, work continues. But I still like the quality of these decals. Now I'll tell you that the decals themselves demand a little bit longer of a time in the water than is normal. Well, is normal is what I'm used to. 
I'm used to like dipping them real fast and then setting them out on the paper towel. These ones need to soak for a bit. Okay, that is one, two. That needs to go here. I mean, once you get them out on the kit, they're lovely, and the orange is a lovely color um, and nice and solid and all of that. It's just, um, you know, when you see it on the blue paper, you're not really sure what the color is going to look like. But against the white hull, that orange is a, it's a lovely color. So no qualms about that. It's just a matter of taking a look at what the instructions say and then maybe also looking at the box art to see some of the color details that you can't really see in this line art. The line art is um, meant to show what ha you know where all where they all go but it's not uh, because some of these decals are so small it's not a real good indication so that's when you go back and you start looking on the uh, box art. Now, I did not do that correctly, according to them. Now, according to them, those arrows need to be pointing towards the door. So, that's a good thing I checked. These need to go 90 degrees to how I had them. to turn the decals really are bringing this thing to life it is something that was painfully missing in detail before Let's see if that's looking square oh no that's way off square those square those decals up okay let's go back let's go back to the box next time oh they have them much further out I have them right up on the line mm -hmm. okay we'll move them they also have them they also have them pretty much I was going to say, no, they're pretty, they're pretty much right. I just need, okay, well, you don't need to hear me doing this. I've got a lot of the little decals done, particularly on the stack back here. Um, those are ready. Those are going to sit in and dry for a bit. Uh, working on the ones on the top of the shuttle. Then I'll move over to the sides and do the ones, the big complicated one that has to wrap around. That's the one I'm most concerned about. And... Um, then uh, the simple ones like the name and stuff like that. But it's coming along nicely. I think the secret is to take your time, let them let them dry, let them uh, like I said, they do they do want to soak a little longer than normal in the water. so uh, don't rush them and I think you'll get good results. Alrighty, I just took a break and now I'm back um, continuing the decaling. Uh, let everything dry in here on the front here and I'm going to start on the side and I've got the the tail uh, rudder um, decal sitting out and then I'm going to uh, do the complicated ones that wrap around and I'm going to make sure I've got these right that wrap around the uh, hull or the main body. I think this is the one I want. Uh, let's see. No, I don't think that is the one I want. I think that's the other sides. I could look at the numbers, but you know, why, why do that? Uh, yes, wouldn't you know, it's the other one. Okay, that's the one that's going to wrap around this side. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get that one to start soaking and we'll get the uh, one on the tail fin first. I might need to warm that water up. It's been a while since uh, I've used it and uh, it may have gone soft on me here. 
Uh, let's see, I need to cut out the decals that I'm going to need. I'm going to need those guys. I'm not using any of the marine decals. I'm only using the Moonraker name. I need to figure out what number I want to make this. Do I want to make it Moonraker 6? Do I want to make it Moonraker 1? Moonraker 5? Uh, typical Star Trek would have it either be 5 or 6. It seems to be shuttle names seem, seem to have that number on it. I think I'm going to go with Moonraker 2. We're going to call it Moonraker 2, which means I need... Uh, I need... Let's see, they are... The numbers go on both sides of the fin, and then they go on the one wing. So let me get all of the twos out. And I call it Moonraker 2. I need those. I need the actual name Moonraker. And I need one of those. Okay. Well, I'll let you know how this goes. Okay, so I'm putting the top stripe on the Moonraker shuttle, and it doesn't quite fit. And I knew that this was, you know, a possibility at least. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to mitigate it. Um, it's to me important that this these two decals line up when you're staring at it like that because that's how it's going to be displayed. Um, and it's also important to me that there be no white space between this decal and this decal. So what I've opted for is to split it. Well, I mean, the, the decal is split, but to... Uh, accentuate the seam where the uh, cargo doors are and just leave it uh, open there and make it look intentional. As long as it's even the whole way, it looks intentional. So we'll do that on both sides and that way we don't have a white gap down in here which is something I want to avoid and we will get a, uh, a perfect chevron on the uh, doors which is to me more important when it's sitting like that. But so I'll let you know, uh, you know, if something was bound to go awry and this was the thing that has decided to go awry. So let me go ahead and do the other one now and then we'll get all of that misery out at one time. And then I can decide which other tiny decals I'm going to use. I'm debating how many of these uh, triangles and squares and such that I want to use. I also, uh, this, this carries over onto the theme what I was talking about earlier. See the black line that they give you for the uh, flap there? That do, in no way does that match the, uh, the outline of the imprinted or the uh, carved in or the molded in flap. The molded in flap is way different than the decal flap. So we're going to go with the decal flap and I'm going to... Uh, do the other side of that right now as well. Yeah, that's this one here. So we'll get those and give them, give them a long good time to soak. Then we've got some smaller thrusters to go around the front. We still have the numbers and the names. We have a few yet. Not quite done. Alrighty, all the decals are down and we are gonna let them set up completely overnight and then come back in the manana put a flat coat over everything and then we can do the final touch-up which would be the final silver on the top there uh, attaching well attaching the uh, engine bells to the back of the shuttle and then attaching the shuttle to the stack and that will finish this week's build but um, that all happens uh, tomorrow welcome back everybody it's Friday it is the last work day of the week it'll be the last work day on this Moonraker shuttle <coughs> and uh, what I need to do at this point is now that it has slightly warmed up outside I can go ahead and put the flat coat over all of the decals that have settled in overnight and I have to say these decals have settled in nicely very nicely um, like, like I said yesterday pointing this out this is an intentional break here and I evened it up on that side so that uh, you don't think I couldn't make the decal stretch. I could if I'd have wanted to. But, uh, last things to do would be to flat coat this and then put the uh, 
the nozzle engine nozzle bells on so uh, let's get that done uh, had a lovely mail call today a good friend of the show actually uh, it's been like that kind of all week got a wonderful uh, gift from Elliot Brown friend of the show with the uh, uh, let's see the the Bob Ross air freshener I don't know what possessed you to send that Elliot but I'm glad you did thank you very much also you'll see the police badge from Lanscombe uh, Pennsylvania that's from my good friend Baldy who uh, is a is an ever ever uh, ever renewing source of joy around here whenever he calls he uh, always met, picks my spirits up so thank you Baldy Merry Christmas and uh, a happy new year to all of you and yours now Baldy you tried to you tried to educate me I don't think it's gonna work you sent me one of these charts for how to uh, how to calculate resistance values on uh, resistors? This might as well be in Klingon. I appreciate the fact that it's laid out clear. I just don't get it. I don't know what it means, and I've never had. That's how you say I've never never had a tolerance for uh, for uh, figuring out the codes on um, on diodes and, and resistors because. Sometimes it's very difficult to see whether that's supposed to be a black or whether that's a blue or a brown or whatever. So uh, I, I prefer to, to just get a bag of resistors and someone will tell me this is a 470 ohm resistor. This will work on a 9 volt battery. That's really all I need out of life. I, I, I just don't have the eye for it. It's, some, it's like reading music. Some people can do it. Some people can't. I'm one of the people who can't. I just can't read this kind of music. But I appreciate the effort, and I, uh, the thought is, uh, is well-placed. Um, but that's kind of how my week has gone. This is a lovely card from Baldy that came with the badge, or the patch. Um, it's just a, a weirdly, a, a, well, it's Christmas week. I hope, of course, by the time this goes up, Christmas will have come and gone. I hope yours was wonderful. Um... It's it's I won't say it's a blue Christmas around here, but it's kind of a, I'm just busy kind of a funk and I'm working my way out of it. Uh, I had to have um, Had to have a hot water heater replaced that kind of put a big old dent in the uh, In the Christmas spirit as you know that kind of stuff can do But uh, we're, we're up on the other side of that. I'm also very seriously um uh, concerned about the amount of space that I have and I'm trying to ponder the next steps because it's not quite as simple as oh well just get rid of something or uh, uh, just build another room on the house that sounds nice but it's just not something that's that simple to to uh, do in reality so uh, I'm having a bit of a work around and move and and shuffle and a reshuffle of things and that's going to be a process that's going to work itself out and I'm also thinking about, you know, the plans for the next year. I've got at least two big projects that are, uh, uh, one of them is already here and the other one is coming soon. And those are going to take up some space. And so, uh, not just working display space, but working on it space. So that's the kind of stuff that I'm working with. All right, the shuttle is back. It's been thoroughly flattened. It's time to add the... Uh, engine bells just doing a little bit of cleanup a little bit of cleanup to the bells and we'll put pop them in place um, debating here whether I want to put any scorching on those but since it's uh, I did do it on the uh, the two stacks I did scorch the bottom of those up a little bit and it's just kind of unnatural to see uh, to see engine bells that aren't scorched but uh, yeah I think I can live with it. maybe I can live with it so let's get the uh, just cleaning off a little of the smudge the sprue and then maybe now would be a good time to put some black on there hmm Yeah, I've got an opportunity to do that, so maybe I should. Let's get 
Let's see, I need to get three of the, three of these guys out. Get these on a stick. That's the easiest way of doing it. And I uh, can also do the tiny ones. They have them painted black, don't they? I wonder if they should be black or silver. Uh, of course, I could always check what color they are in the real world, but I would say next to the shuttlecraft at the beginning of the heavy metal movie, this is probably the least accurate shuttle you will ever see. Okay, so that's the first engine in. All I did was uh, run a little bit of the black, flat, flat black around the edge, do a little scorchy, scorchy there. And that also took care of the uh, bare plastic where I nipped it off of the sprue. So all we need to do is take, a, take the tiny brush. Take the tiny brush. Hold me closer, tiny brush. And uh, run it in there. Push this in place, and la da, or da. Okay, I'm going to do the rest of these, and then we'll come back. And here is the final uh, Moonraker, in this case, Moonraker 2. Um, and this time of year, I am quick to quote uh, the immortal Linus in the Christmas, uh, Charlie Brown Christmas special, when he says, uh, you know, I never did think it was such a bad little model, all it needed was a little love. And I think that's true with this one. It it, it all had all the makings of not such a great model when I was putting it together. And I'll tell you that the decals really do snap it into focus as far as making it a good shelf kit. Now, it's not going to win any awards for being a completely accurate space shuttle model. It, it, it just won't. But... Uh, uh, I think if you uh, give it a little love, a little time, a little patience, you too can get a nice desktop uh, Moonraker model out of this kit. Again, this is the uh, AMT 200 scale, which I thought was a strange, it's a strange scale to start with. It is the 1 200th scale space shuttle with boosters. And that's going to do it for this week, for this build of the Moonraker, in this case, Moonraker 2. Um, as we come to the end of the year next week, we'll probably have the uh, the breakdown of the greatest hits of 2023. I'll dig out the old uh, uh, spreadsheet and see how many kits were built and what they were. And uh, we will plan for next year. Like I said, I've got big plans for next year. Don't know how it's going to go. Of course, we never know how it's going to go, and that's the fun of life. I'm all decked out for my Christmas regalia. Um, I hope you all have take some time to uh, spend it with the ones you love, even if it's just yourself. So until next time, y'all be safe, be smart, have a Merry Christmas, and we'll see you here next time.